Do you have brain fog after being in a narcissistic relationship or being raised by a narcissist? Have you always had brain fog? Do you have the feeling of disconnection from the world around you because of it? Let's talk about brain fog and narcissistic toxic relationships and how it relates. Okay, so my name is Lisa Colucci and I'm here to help you understand things related to narcissism and narcissistic relationships or toxic relationships in your life. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. Okay, brain fog. So brain fog is like a feeling of disconnect, of disengagement, unreality, foggy thinking, forgetfulness, detachment from the experiences you're actually having, detachment from your own emotional state, you can lose track of time. You might procrastinate a lot or feel like you're procrastinating. You might not be able to do a whole lot in your day. You might lose track of what you're talking about while you're talking about it. It's sort of a disassociation from living your life, right? It's it's this foggy space where you're, you're exhausted, you're tired, you feel like you're just run down, you can't cope, you're either emotionally numb or emotionally oversensitive. These are all things that happen when you have CPTSD and the brain fog that comes from that. So basically what happens is you're under a lot of stress. You're under extreme stress when you are being emotionally manipulated and treated poorly in your relationships and that's saying it lightly, right? So your body and your brain go through a lot, okay? And the cortisol that is increasing because of the stress, that's a natural thing that happens. And what it's meant to do is get you out of there. It's meant to trigger fight flight so that you can escape and flee or freeze if you have to, right? In a situation so that you're safe. It's meant to keep you safe. And that cortisol isn't a bad thing, okay? Until it takes over, until you have repeated toxic things happening to you day after day after day for year after year or even month after month, right? And even a week of repeated challenging, difficult, horrible things happening will make your cortisol spike and make it very uncomfortable and you can slip into the state, right? So imagine a lifetime of this. Imagine being raised like this. Your cortisol levels, uh, levels are through the roof, right? So wait, your cortisol levels are through the roof. And then one thing that happens when your cortisol levels are high is inflammation sets in. Inflammation in the body and inflammation in the brain. Okay, and when you have inflammation in the brain, you're going to get brain fog. You're going to have all kinds of reactions, both cognitive and neurological feeling. I think it's probably why people have the feelings of fibromyalgia or pain in their body. I know for myself, when my cortisol levels finally went below, you know, that point that my body pain was relieved from the fibromyalgia that I have. So it's a very toxic thing to have those cortisol levels up so high. So not only is an emotional manipulative person who is being toxic to you in your life, toxic to your emotions and your mind, but they are affecting your body. And this is one way in which they are. So again, when you have this inflammation in the brain, you're gonna have memory loss. You're gonna have fuzzy thinking, foggy thinking, feelings of unreality. So you're gonna have an excited nervous system. So you may feel exhausted and totally in a panic at the same time. You're, this CPTSD symptom may feel completely conflicting. Like you're just going, can't sleep, can't stop. Your adrenaline's pumping. You're you feel like you need to run, you feel panicked, you feel frozen, whatever it is for you. And at the same time, exhausted, checked out, things are unreal, kind of flat. You know, it's this conflicting thing, but it's this is what happens when you have emotionally manipulative people in your life creating toxic situations for you over and over. If you've experienced this, let me know. What are you doing to help yourself? How are you getting through the day? You know what I mean? I had been there for years. I can remember times where pretty much one thing per day was all I could handle. And that lasted a long time, okay? And it, it, it takes effort to get through this. The unfortunate part about emotional and hidden abuse is that somebody else does it and you're left repairing it for yourself, okay? And so let's talk about that. That's okay. At this point, that's where we are, and it's no point in sitting there 
worrying about what was done because it's already done and we need to get through it and heal from it. So let's talk about that. What are some things you can do to help yourself when you have brain fog? Well, your diet. Number one, look, think about it. This is a body reaction, this part, okay? This part is a body thing. This is a raised cortisol levels. This is so avoid stimulants, avoid coffee, avoid smoking if you can, avoid the things that make your body go into these, you know, adrenaline pumping things. Relax, eat foods that are nutritious, whole foods, real foods, things that have the good fatty acids, okay? I'm not gonna tell you what to eat, you eat what you wanna eat, but find diets that work for your body that make you feel grounded and supported and calm. And it may take a while for the diet thing to take effect. It does help and it, it's not gonna be the miracle thing. Well, maybe for some people, but <laughs> not for most people. Most people, this is one tiny piece, but it is important. And if you do it for a prolonged period of time, six months or more, you may feel a significant difference simply from the diet changes. Okay, another thing you can do is get sleep. I know as a, as a lifelong insomniac, <laughs> that is not, something that's easily done if it's difficult to sleep. If you cannot sleep, rest, okay? Do your best to train your body, to teach your body that, that the dark nighttime is for sleep. That is important for our circadian rhythm. That is important for a healthy day, okay? Is to get the sleep in the night. Turn off your electronics. I don't know, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. If you go to bed at 10, give it an hour to two hours before bed, turn off electronics, turn off television, turn off anything that is stimulating to the vision and do other things. Read, sew, knit, color, paint, stare at a wall, pet an animal, anything. Just don't stimulate your brain with the electronics, okay? Find articles and stuff for good sleep health find good sleep hygiene, they might call it. That might help you to see where you can eliminate some things in your life or add in other things in your life. If you can't sleep, close your eyes, relax, breathe deeply, keep your fantasy thinking on positive things. You start thinking about that narcissist, you start thinking about any, any stresses in your life, this is not the time to solve that problem. This is the time for rest, relaxation, and calm okay your processing that you need to do will happen in your sleep if you if you need to process some of this stuff and and the narcissistic stuff comes up it'll happen don't worry okay let it happen don't be afraid of bad dreams write them down look for this hidden symbols find ways to make your dreams help you heal exercise regularly guys stretching yoga pilates core exercise swimming anything that works your core anything that works deep into your body those deep muscles that are within your body, the fine muscles that help hold your body up. Those are important to work. They help stimulate everything toward healing, okay? Aerobic exercise, not the best thing for this. If you love it, do it, but also please include some weight training for yourself if you want, because it is way more grounding think about it we're not trying to raise our adrenaline we're not trying to give ourselves energy which aerobic exercise can do what we're trying to do is calm ourselves and center ourselves and be more present when you have brain fog you do not feel present so in order to feel present these these kinds of exercises can help you exercise in a quiet room or play very calm music things without words even, just so that you can center and you can be present to yourself. Pay attention to your body while you're exercising in a positive way. Oh, I see, I raise my hip too high when I do this particular stretch. Okay, I'm gonna drop my hip, that kind of paying attention. Not, oh my gosh, my belly's in the way when I move forward, I hate my belly, not that kind, okay? Pay attention in positive ways to the actions and the functionality of your body. It can help you get out of that headspace of thinking and worrying and looping on toxic things and toxic people in your life. And the last thing here that I want to say is meditation. Meditation three times a day if you can for five to ten minutes. There's time for it. Five minutes, okay? To sit quiet, breathe and be aware of your body. Take some breaths and imagine your breath filling your body with love and light or warmth and kindness, whatever works for you, from the top all the way to your toes. And however many breaths that takes, do it. You don't have to go into complete deep meditations. That's fantastic if you can, but anything to slow down, be present, be centered, be mindful of yourself for a few minutes every day, a few times a day, okay? These things can help a lot. They're not the cure-all, right? 
cognitive therapy helps. Talking it through with a coach or a therapist can help. I do this a lot with people where we just talk through the trauma or we just talk through this part for a short time in order to help someone get on their feet so that they can then move forward. Okay, so if you need that, check out the information in the main description because there is info on where to find that kind of coaching. If you wanna find a therapist, they're out there as well. Just find a trauma-informed therapist that understands CPTSD and how to heal from it, no matter what the CPTSD is from. So other things that can help you real quick, make lists. Okay. If you're feeling like you've got so much brain fog that storing all the things you need to do in your day in your head is a problem, make a list. Don't call it a to-do list because then you feel like you have to do it. Don't worry about it. This is just a list. Maybe a don't forget list or a try to remember this list, right? And just put them down and just carry it with you. And if you need to write things down all through the day, go ahead. If lists stress you out though, don't do it. This is only if you feel like you're forgetting things and you wish to remember and it can help, okay? Don't try to store everything up here because right now your brain isn't at full functioning. You've got a lot of stuff going on as we described earlier. So slow down and throughout your day, put away that phone. Get off the screens, okay? Get into nature, get into reality, get into what people watching, get into animal watching, get into plant watching, whatever it is, be present to your environment. So be present to yourself, be present to your environment. The screen is not, it's a, it's a place to go to detach, okay? And as a person who works on one, I can tell you, it's a requirement for me personally to put it away and do something very engaging outside in life with animals or people, right? Or myself. And that helps me stay out of that brain fog that could slip in if I have a stressful week, okay? And then of course, goes without saying, lower your stress. Uh, well, you can't really, right? If you're with a toxic person, but if you're not and you're no contact, stop looking. Be for real, true, honest, no contact. Do it for yourself. This isn't about the other person. At this point in time, if you have left and you're in no contact, your life is about you. That isn't selfish and it isn't wrong. It's important, it's imperative, you're healing. You wouldn't leave yourself sick somewhere and then just like force yourself to do a whole lot of things and not think, oh, I probably should be taking care of myself, right? That's not selfish. It's the same thing, take care of yourself. Slow it down. Get rid of things in your life that you don't wanna do. Do what you need to do with mindfulness and as carefully as you can so that you're not rushing and you're not hurrying. Do your best to slow your pace, to take a breath and take this time that is yours for healing, okay? It may not be fast or it may be fast. Your time is yours. You're in an individual path on your way to something better for your life and transforming your life into what you want it to be. So with that, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, if you need coaching, group coaching, or support of any kind, like peer support or anything like that, check out the information of any video on this channel. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. My name is Lise Colucci, and I will be back next time. Take care. Bye-bye.